So as Holly mentioned before, uh, coordination is uh, much more than just modeling and file management. It's more than just uh, buying you know, modeling software and something else to make sure that uh, uh, you, you, have, you have all the components in place. It's, uh, it's more than just putting all those pieces together. We have completed over 300 projects and uh, learned the hard way together with our clients what it takes to go through a, a successful coordination process. The, the common perception is that with only a model and a coordination tool, you can implement BIM and uh, you're ready to go after that. And, but most people fail to coordinate at that point the fourth and the fifth dimension of the project. And often coordination processes and project gets delayed because of uncoordinated schedules and long material lead times. So for example, you might plan to coordinate the steel with the MEP, but all the steel is already fabricated, so you have less impact on the outcome. And obviously, you don't want to end up with uh, an outcome um, similar to what you see on this image, uh, which uh, was unfortunate. Uh, the framers just, I guess, wanted to finish their work, but uh, the bracing was in the way. So true coordination takes planning. Uh, it takes a process, define repeatable steps that you can implement on all of your projects. You need to set up a content plan for a model and specify all the components that will enable you to coordinate at the right level of detail. It requires new contracts uh, and addendums. For example, you, you might want to consider incorporating the principles of the AIA E202 or the AGC Conduct 301 BIM addendum into your RFPs and subcontractor contracts. It also takes execution. You need to facilitate meetings with the right people and the right tools in place for quick resolution. And finally, like everything else, it takes a good schedule. You need to consider the sequence of construction, uh, long lead items, uh, sequence of fabrication and delivery so that important components of the building are coordinated before fabrication and construction starts. There are also different types of coordination processes. Uh, when we talk about coordination, it's very important to differentiate between design phase coordination and construction phase coordination. Design phase coordination is, for example, when the design team, the architects and the engineers, uh, coordinate about space allocation of main systems, uh, and uh, they're not necessarily looking at fabrication level of detail at that point, but they work through the design phase uh, for quick and fast resolution and make sure that the interstitial space is high enough for um, all the mechanical equipment and mechanical uh, duct runs and electrical and plumbing duct runs that need to go in there. During the construction phase, typically subcontractors will coordinate uh, fabrication level detail models to finalize their shop drawings and make sure that everything is worked out for smooth installation before construction starts. In an IPD or a design build project, this difference and the difference between the design phase and construction phase coordination might disappear altogether due to the uh, early involvement of, the, of subcontractors in different trades. So we, we're seeing a, a mix today where uh, where you can see subs participating in coordination early with the design team. And the engineers at that point don't even necessarily build 3D models. It's the subcontractor that takes on 3D modeling. And they immediately go to a higher level of detail and help work out problems that might only be worked out later in the shop drawing process in a traditional delivery uh, process. Some of the projects that we worked on include a um, hotel, a Ritz Carlton Hotel, Lake Tahoe. This is a uh, 406,000 square foot building that will, that will include six above grade and four below grade stories. And uh, working with the contractor, they were able to eliminate coordination problems of so this very complicated roof structure and avoid costly change orders. Uh, there were a bunch of uh, steel components that were sticking through the, uh, the uh, roof plane and um, the steel had to be fabricated correctly uh, in order to assemble the roof structure properly. So it had to be coordinated uh, before construction started. Uh, this is another project that uh, we're currently working on. This is a 45-story hotel uh, in Denver downtown. 
It's, uh, it's approximately 800,000 square feet and um, it's scheduled to be completed in 2010. Uh, by the way, both of these projects are available as uh, a separate Fridays with Vico webinar, so um, Holly will send you a link where you can listen to a more detailed case study of these projects. And what I'm going to explain today is the process that we deployed on these projects working with the contractors. And then finally, uh, another project that we're currently working on is with, uh, with, a, with uh, William A. Barry con uh, constru uh, Construction Company in Cambridge, Massachusetts is a science lab. It's a, it's a $200 million science lab uh, with vivariums on the eighth floor and labs uh, in, the, in the building. As you can see, the steel structure and the uh, MEP is pretty intense. We were able to coordinate this before subcontractors came on board and help subcontractors reduce risk on the project and develop their shop drawings a lot faster than uh, they would typically do. So let's take a look at the uh, important components of, of this process. And as I said earlier, contracts and uh, addendums to contracts are, are really important in order to make sure that you've developed the, the right relationship with your subcontractors or uh, with the design team or with the engineers. VICO initiated the development of uh, the model progression specification document with WebCore uh, a couple of years ago. WebCore refines the process with the AIA Council, uh, California Council IPD Task Force Subcommittee. And later on, this document was released in 2008, and it's called the AIA E202 document, or contract. It basically describes uh, three things. It describes protocols that you need to take into consideration when uh, you like to perform a success, successful coordination process. It uh, introduces the concept of level of development or level of detail. I'm going to call it level of detail in my presentation. And it also introduces the concept of uh, a model element or, or model progression specification, as we call it, basically uh, a matrix that helps you describe what kind of components need to be modeled when. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, uh, in, more in detail uh, later on in, in my presentation. The other document uh, that you might want to take a look at is the uh, AGC Consensus Docs 301 BIM Addendum, uh, which was developed by the uh, AGC BIM Forum and addresses mostly coordination protocols and it, it uh, uses a concept called BIM Execution Plan. And Vico developed all kinds of different tools to make sure that a BIM Execution Plan can flow properly. So uh, we developed uh, some of the templates and some of the, uh, the documents and protocols for uh, the BIM execution plan that's described in the AGC BIM addendum. Uh, and and I'll, I'll show you what those documents are and how those documents can be produced. So let's take a look at the actual process uh, and the protocols for successful coordination. Uh, the first step, like in every successful process, is, is planning. The second step is, is coordination, and the third is building the actual building. In the first step, you want to make sure that you have what we call a content plan and a model progression specification defined for the team. This will help the team communicate about what needs to be modeled when, at what level of detail, and, and uh, it will also help you decide which elements will need to be coordinated uh, with what other systems at different stages of the project. The priority structure will help you define a decision process for who goes first when you find a conflict. And it's really important to define that early on because um, if, for example, one subcontractor leads the su uh, coordination process, they can be biased to their own systems and uh, they want to always go first. Everybody else le is, is left behind, so the, the project is not necessarily optimized. So setting up this priority structure will define that, for example, uh, gravity pipes go first or uh, pneumatic tubing goes first because that's the, that's ha that has uh, a lot of constraints in its, in its design, or um, you know, how, how you prioritize basically the different systems in, in your coordination process. 